who don't know. I'm going to get the awesome prank probably in the back. That's okay. We, we can, we can, my mom, my I'll mom take care of it. it. Okay, have a seat. So look what I brought today. A fall leaf. Do you see it? Now, have y'all been seeing fall leaves outside? Yes. Yes? I have too. And you know, sometimes we take fall leaves for granted because we just think they're going to be there in the fall. And we forget to thank God because, you know, they're always there in the fall. But they really are pretty, aren't they? And that's the way it is sometimes with other things that are always there, like our families. They're always there. Sometimes we forget to thank God for our families. What about food? Yes, we have food all the time. Sometimes we forget to thank God for food. Guy, you want to say something? I like to eat grapes. Because sometimes they, 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 um, like, they um they get chickens they get chickens for food and sometimes mm -hmm. and sometimes other farmers other farmers don't don't get chickens for food mm -hmm. they get their eggs for food okay that's right what about our clothes, our clothes we have closets and drawers full of clothes but sometimes we forget to thank God for the clothes, for the sheep, for the farmers, for the people who sell us our clothes or the people who make our clothes. What about our homes? Our homes are always there. Sometimes we forget to thank God for our homes. Yes, to thank God for you. And, and, yes. And also the builders who build new things. That's right, the builders who build new things. What about our teachers? Yes. We need to thank God for our teachers, don't we? Yeah, we or we wouldn't learn. That's right. We so, know how to read or talk. so when you see the fall leaves outside, and they're so beautiful, use them as a reminder to thank God for all our many blessings, the things that are always here, and the things that are new and fresh. Yes. Now, let me tell you a verse from the Bible, and I want you to say it after me. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and sing joyful songs of praise. Will you say that part with me? I'll go slow. Yes. Let us come before him. Let us come before him with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. And sing and sing joyful songs of praise. Joyful songs of praise. That is Psalm 95, 2. And now will you pray with me? Just a second. I think I have a leaf for each person. Would you take a leaf? Uh, each person can choose one. I want this really cool. There you go. Can you get one? Fall leaf. A fall leaf. That's right. You got it? Okay. Okay, here you go, guys. Okay, will you pray with me? Grown-ups out there, y'all can help. Dear God, we thank you for fall leaves and how beautiful they are. Help us remember to be thankful. At Thanksgiving... And every day. Amen. Okay, see y'all later. Bye. Huh? Go that way. Love you.
Let's bow our heads for the prayer of illumination. Our Father, we find ourselves facing a new beginning of our church year. May the coming season of Advent awaken in us a new expectancy as we enter the period of awaiting and the coming of Christ into our world once again. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, let us hear the ancient news with new ears and welcome the nativity with open hearts. This we pray in the name and for the sake of our loving Lord and only Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is Psalm 100, find it in the Pew Bible on page 552. Listen now for the word of God. And this is a responsive reading. Make a joyful no noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship, Worship the Lord with, with gladness. gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Thanks, Sandy. Our New Testament re lesson is from Luke 17, 11 to 19. Listen for God's word. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean? But the, where, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of our God. Thanks be to God. Have you ever been really grateful? I mean, maybe it was after days of waiting and wondering, was it cancer? And you heard the doctor say that the test came back negative. At first, you felt relief wash over you. And then it was as if a weight had been lifted off your chest. And suddenly, you were filled with gratitude so rich you could almost taste it. Or maybe... It was after years of disappointment, month after month, worrying if you would ever have a baby. And then once pregnant, it was a rocky road with early labor always on the horizon. And the gratitude almost bowled you over as your healthy baby was born. The wonder of it all mingled with profound thanksgiving. I believe that that is the way the leper felt who returned. I mean, can you imagine if it was you? Everything was going along okay. Yes, there were the usual struggles, but all in all, it was a good life. Then the first sore appeared. 
and you hoped against hope as you watched it grow larger until it finally couldn't be hidden or denied any longer. And then the pain you endured as you were sent away, your tears and their tears, the anguish of your family, your friends staring, eyes full of pity, assuring you that they would help look after your kids. And then the loneliness that followed, empty days without your trade, empty days without your family and friends, empty days, no home to care for, no food to gather. Day after day is vacant with nothing to do and no one to care. Yes, you met some other outcast, but each one seemed to be isolated in their own misery. Each one bore not only the pain, but also the humiliation of having everything in life stripped away. In life, you would have never had anything to do with each other. But with the common experience of the disease, you end up living together. But still, sometimes the loneliness is overwhelming. Then you heard of one who could cure this awful disease. So you and a few of the others dared approach him. On the outskirts of the village, you called out, Jesus, Master, have mercy. And to your surprise, he answered you and instructed you to go and show yourself to the priest. The same instructions that were given for the rare few whose illness leaves them, whose skin has been restored. How odd. Neither you nor the others are clean, and yet... Jesus tells you to go as if you are. And then, just as you are on your way, you are all healed. It was a miracle. And inside you wells up such gratitude. It simply cannot be ignored. You turn and run back, finding Jesus, and humbly pour out your gratitude. And he asks about the others, and you look around and realize that you're the only one who had come back. And then he says the strangest thing, go, your faith has made you well. What faith, you think? It was Jesus. He's the one that made you well. It wasn't your own power that had healed you, or you would have done it long ago. God. Was it God working through Jesus? You want to shout, thank you, thank you, thank you. You rise to go to the priest as you wonder about the others who were healed. Hmm. You know, in each of us is the Samaritan, the one who returned to give thanks. And in each of us is also the others, the others who did not. Sometimes we are so intent on following the directions that we forget to give voice to our gratefulness. Sometimes it is the excitement of the moment that muffles the gratitude. Sometimes we are so preoccupied with the things we must do that thanksgiving, the act of offering gratitude, falls by the wayside. Sometimes our good intentions get in the way. 
We will express our gratitude later at a more appropriate time. A few years back, I led a mission trip to Tijuana, Mexico. There we became aware that we were surrounded by gratitude. The people we worshipped with were filled with gratitude to God. They joyfully sang praises to God and were so grateful for what they had. Their families, for their church. As we worked together on Vacation Bible School, they expressed their gratitude to us for coming. And as we worked side by side on the construction projects with them, they thanked us for our hard work. When we paused to look around, our group discovered that these Mexican Christians had so much less than we have. Their church was so much smaller and more run down with no air conditioning. And their homes were much simpler. And many had to walk almost everywhere because they did not have cars. And yet they seemed to be filled with thanksgiving right there in the middle of the hot, dry summer. Thanksgiving, we learned, is an attitude that is not based on what you have, but on how you view what you have. I want to say that once more because I think that's the, the key thought here. Thanksgiving, we learned, is an attitude not based on what you have, but on how you view what you have. Rather than wanting different circumstances or more things, rather than wanting a different job or higher pay, I wonder, is the secret of a grateful heart becoming aware of our attitude and our outlook? Is the road to thanksgiving paved with an awareness of our blessings and a realization that life doesn't owe us anything. God doesn't owe us anything. Now, I'm going to come down. Uh, Hannah, I think I forgot to tell you. <laughs> I'm going to come down and I want to ask you to think about it. Think about something you're grateful for that you have never thanked God for. That might be hard. Something you're grateful for that you've never thanked God for. Are a few of you willing to share? Can you think of anything? That your child ended up with a bigger heart, wonderful, than you could have ever imagined. Crystal? Thankful for your mom. Anybody think of anything else? Something you're grateful for that you've never thanked God for. Yeah, Ed? How different your kids are, yes. When this question was posed to me a few years ago, one of the things that I thought of was hot showers. And I thought of how many people in this world don't have a hot shower. And I take it for granted. 
What else? Anybody else think of something they're grateful for? Yeah, sure. Your heated seats in your car, yes. Anything else? Yeah. You're thankful for your wife. Yay, that's wonderful. Linda, he's thankful for you. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. It's sometimes it, our blessings are like that that we don't recognize what it's like to have good, healthy, fast feet until one of them starts hurting. Yeah. You know, these things that we've mentioned, they're not new. It's not like any of these things were new. And yet, what is new is how we look at them. It's our attitude. And as we go about celebrating our national Thanksgiving holiday, I encourage you to use it to change the way you look at life. All that we have and all that we are comes from God. May we be truly grateful this week and on our days and weeks to come. Amen and amen. School in Huntersville and Riley had a milestone event in her life this week. Riley got her driver's license. Riley, take your mask off so folks can see you up here. <laughs> now, in our culture, getting your driver's license is the biggest thing that happens between childhood and high school graduation. And so I asked Riley, if we could be a part of that in her life. And Riley, thank you for allowing Beth Page and God to be a part of this life event. Listen as I read Psalm 5, verse 11. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. Riley, you are growing into the adult that God has created you to be. It is our state and our country's expectation that you will use this new privilege and freedom well. Your driver's license is more than a private possession. It is a sign of the community's trust in you. Riley, will you remember society's trust in you and use your license in the bonds of our community for the good of all. And will you live up to our faith in you as you receive this new responsibility? And with this new responsibility comes risk and the possibility of making errors in judgment. Riley, will you rely on God and the trusted adults in your life to guide you in negotiating the corners and turns in the road ahead. People of Beth Page, will you support and pray for Riley as she accepts this new responsibility of being a trusted driver in our community? Please say we will. May God be glorified in your life, Riley, as you manage this new freedom with honesty, and as you drive, do so conscientiously and with accountability. Let us pray. O oh God, yours is the beginning and ending of our journey. 
We thank you for Riley and her willingness to take the risks that go with learning to be an adult. We thank you that she is ready to drive and her keen sense of adventure. Be with her as she ventures into life. Keep her alert to what lies ahead, behind, and beside, continually enjoying the ride and attentive to the destination. And may her faith in you grow in the days ahead through Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations. Faithfulness is courtesy. 